Chasing Ice, the 2012 US documentary directed by Jeff Orlowski, tells the story of James Baylog, an acclaimed nature photographer, documenting the disappearance of the world's largest glaciers. Determined to expose the unprecedented impact of global warming to the public, Baylog embarks on an ambitious journey to photograph the retreat of ice from the Arctic over several years. What makes this documentary effective, and what sets it apart from other films about climate change, is its representation of climate change as a tangible reality, rather than as a distant, abstract concept. Chasing Ice is largely a participatory documentary, with Orlowski filming the real-life experiences of Baylog and his expedition team. Ultimately, the actions of these individuals are more important than the images they record. As Bill Nichols states, photographic images do not present concepts, they embody them, requiring interpretation in order to support a perspective. The raw, shaky cam vision of unscripted commentary from Baylog's team allows us to witness their authentic concern about what they observe. This thing is going to break off all summer long, man. Look at this. This footage is combined with live and recorded interviews, where Baylog and his colleagues explain their observations, often using analogies to assist our understanding. It's like air being let out of a balloon. Simple edited graphics are often combined with this footage to further clarify their explanations. That vertical change is the height of the Empire State Building. Extreme long shots of the team dwarfed by the glaciers and the meltwater canyons they transverse provide a reference point for us to judge the true scale of the changes they witness. You see how, look at the whole thing. Their dramatic footage of the largest glacier collapse ever filmed is shown in real time with minimal editing and diegetic sound, letting the power and horror of these events speak for themselves within the context of their investigation. Chasing Ice is story-driven. Interviews and voiceover focalise the narrative through Baylog's personal perspectives from the film's outset. There's a powerful piece of history that's unfolding in these pictures. The choice and order of shots used in the edit embody the urgency of Baylog's mission and the setbacks he faces. Montages of his adventures through the ice to set up time-lapse cameras accompanied by optimistic music later contrast with raw footage of Baylog discovering his cameras broken and malfunctioning after six months. <laughs> Controlled time-lapse cinematography of melting ice set to anxious music breaks up the narrative at these moments of stasis, projecting Baylog's emotions onto the ice itself. When Baylog returns again to check on the cameras, the shots are deliberately made as long as possible to increase anticipation. 2008. It just shot. It's been working all winter. These editing strategies, which break the documentary into distinct narrative units, allow us to empathise with Balog as a character. This is used to great rhetorical effect when Balog listens to climate change denying news reports on his laptop. Community. There is no consensus. This no. is a myth. All of this garbage science has been a total fraud and a fake. These news clips, juxtaposed with the sincerity of Baylog's attempts to document reality, appear ignorant and offensive, despite not actually being criticised. Focalisation through Baylog's narrative allows Orlowski to skillfully shape our perspective of the issues presented in Chasing Ice without us realising it. Bill Nichols states that documentary films usually contain a tension between the specific and the general. In Chasing Ice, however, Orlowski effectively incorporates general facts about climate change into the account of Baylog's expedition by smoothly transitioning between raw expedition footage, interviews with scientists, and visualizations of data. Baylog's expedition to capture the story of the ice is presented alongside discussions of the actual paleoclimate record stored in ice cores. Similarly, footage of meltwater tunnelling into the Greenland ice sheet is paired with discussions of the impacts of global sea level rise. And all those people are going to be flushed out and have to move somewhere else. These shots accompany the same sombre music played alongside time-lapse footage of melting ice, fusing the two perspectives into a single narrative. Baylog's work can therefore be seen as an extension of this scientific understanding, with the time-lapse footage he presents at the film's conclusion being as much a part of history as they are pieces of cinematic art. This is the, the evidence that we knew what was going on. You can't deny it.